We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about offer campaigns. Is it uh, saturation? Is it fact or fiction? I think, what is offer campaigns? Well, I think saturation? it's both. Hold on a second. The fact and fiction. Is that fair? Can I say that? Yeah, it's okay. not, it's not fiction on our part. Right. Well, I'm going to give the facts. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to decide whether or not it's fiction. Okay, wait. There are there is a number to the properties, kind of. People always say they can't make more property, but you could subdivide. But we're not going to get into that. I'm not going to oh, start a gosh. little argument about that, no, right? Okay, me yeah, either. yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> but um, and there are countries that are making more land, we're, like Holland. We're not even going to go there. That doesn't count. But so there is kind of there is a fact to the numbers. But when you really take a step back. And and uh, and look at how many of us are doing it, and doing this well, and actually doing mail and sending things out and buying property. The number gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So the the do I worry and panic about it is kind of the fiction for me. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. We all have life insurance. You know, we all have uh, all kinds of insurance. I have fire insurance. I have flood insurance. Look where we live, you guys. By the way. I have to get tsunami insurance because of what's behind me. It's the weirdest thing. We're technically in a tsunami zone because of the water behind me. Do I really worry that I'm going to use a tsunami insurance? No, but I have it. <laughs> so it kind of ties into this too. You know, I'm like, all right, fact or fiction? Fact, I have to get tsunami insurance. Fiction, is it really going to happen? Probably not. Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I don't think it's ever happened here. I know. Has there ever been a tsunami no. in Los Angeles? No. But we're in a tsunami zone. We have to call it that. So if there's never been a tsunami yeah. off of LA's coast, wouldn't it be awesome if you were the insurance company who sold insurance? Yes. That for something be that's us. probably never going to happen. New business model being formed right now. <laughs> that's what side of this thing you're on. Yep. That's what side of this real estate mailing thing that uh, we're all on. Exactly. We're on the, we're on the, the blackjack dealer's side. Ooh, I like that. The odds are way in our favor that it's going to go the way we want it. But the blackjack player still thinks they're going to win. That's right. <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. That was a really good analogy, by the way. I like that. That's good. Leonard wrote, hello, Land Academy members. Most of what I've heard about from the weekly calls in regards to improving property follows the thinking, don't look at it, don't touch it, don't breathe on it, in quotes. <laughs> then occasionally, Stephen suggests dropping a mobile home on it. <laughs> like, how is this possible? Like, <laughs> when researching comps for some acquisitions in California, all of the realtors asked about if the lots had wells, and if not, could I get one installed? suggesting that the property price would increase 60 to 100 percent just because there is a well on the property example lot without a well fifty thousand dollars value with the well eighty thousand dollars and of course a lower days on market this demand is apparently a result because of the agriculture like marijuana i'm familiar with some of those properties myself and water shortages yep has anyone experienced a similar situation my thought is to get a permit for a well and then tell the story in my listing or should I just try this on one property cost of course depending on the water you know of course yeah putting five to ten thousand dollars is a pretty good number around ten currently buying four lots thoughts thanks Leonard we're going through this situation right now on multiple uh -huh. properties in uh, multiple counties yep. and I will tell you I don't think it matters but if you're buying four adjacent properties and to get a well in there is five to 10 grand, now, and you can split the well, or you can in Arizona for sure. I'm not sure about California. I'm pretty sure you can. Like the four users of the property can use one well. Right. They, can, they can share it. Man, now you're talking about $2,500 $2, a well. So mm -hmm. um, that's a positive, positive situation. I don't, I don't really think improving property in this way is worth it. 
I think that if you put all the energy that it takes to figure out who's going to do the well, make the phone calls, there's a lot of stuff involved. I'm sure there's California permitting issues. Uh, I don't think it's going to be go out there and drill a well because this is how it is in Arizona. You just go out and drill a well uh, after you get a permit, which is signing your name in a couple places mm -hmm. and drill and you don't need that's over. You can pull as much water as you want out of there. Not that way in California at all. After you get all said and done, I just think that if you put all your energy into buying more property, because that's really what we do here, we're experts at that, uh, it's, it's going to pay out better that way. You know, I would only add this. Some, some people in our community, in our world, like to buy and hold the properties. And they like to uh, lease them out, right? Or you know, rent. They do. I don't know if they. I don't think they do. They I mean it's kind of seller finance, but there could be a play there just to say, because if you ever did want to, if you want to own a property and do something with it, like this Leonard, I don't know, because you can make some extra money on the well. Just a thought, but it's a whole lot of work. You know what? And then it then it taps into, is it really passive income? Because everybody says that, and it's not passive income. No. So, I mean, if you're going to, if you've chosen one, this kind of goes along with our topic today. Right. If you're going to do business in three counties and, and that's it for the rest of your life and you get to know the well driller, you become a well driller. We're do, actually doing something like that with a partner now where we're actually becoming the well drilling right. company and the septic installer and all of that stuff. So it brings your costs down uh, very, very, brings your costs way down for the same reason that we bought a, a bulk mail company. Uh, because we send a lot of mail out. Right. So, offers to owners. So, if that's the deal, then I get it. But if you're just going to put a well in for four properties in a single county in, in California, I don't think it's worth it. Right. That's what I'm saying. You're going down that path that I have gone down many times where I've looked back and said, darn, I shouldn't have done that. How much time did that cost? How many long did I wait? All the paperwork, all the hassle, all the, yeah. you know, the, the meetings that had to be approved upon. Just time. It was just took, and then it took six months longer to sell because mm -hmm. of all of this. I should have just taken the cash and run. Yeah. That's that's the trade off and the discussion you have to have with yourself. Which brings me back to Leonard's first sentence here. With the occasional time that Steve says, drop a mobile home on it, on it and walk away. I don't mean install a mobile home. I don't mean buy a new, new Clayton for $180,000. I mean buy a piece of junk mobile home from a used dealer a couple miles away and offer to pay him two grand to go drop the thing on there nicely and walk away. And so you can tell a story in your posting like, this property has a mobile home on it. I don't know if it's installed. I don't know what's going on, if, if it's livable or whatever. Or even take it a step further and say, we dropped a mobile home on this property. It's not connected to anything. Here it is, and it's yours. It comes with the property. Mm -hmm. Now, that took me maybe an hour to, to complete the entire thing and and a couple grand. And so now I'm still in the business of buying and, uh, buying and selling land I'm, and I'm not in a well installation business. There you go. <laughs> Today's topic, offer campaign saturation. Is it fact or fiction? Well, let's start with the facts. There are a hundred and, like I said yesterday, 155 million or so parcels available to purchase in this country. It's not government land, it's not BLM land, it's not state, it's not a reservation, it's none of that city-owned property available to purchase for private parties. It's called private party land, which is what we are, private parties, all of us. There's 3,144 counties or parishes-ish, depending on how you, uh, it's very close to that, depending on how you look at Washington, D.C. and some other stuff. If 300 people send out between 1,000 and 1,500 units a month consistently, which no one does, not even us. Uh, I'm being very conservative here. That's 450,000 units of mail a month. For 155 million properties, that's going to take 345 months to get through all that. If we all just can't, we're machines and just kept doing it. <laughs> or 30 years. That's the equivalent to 30 years. So here's the deal. That's assuming that, you know, no one, this can, Joe's brought this up before we were talking about that, that properties would turn over every 30 years and they don't. Properties turn over when life circumstances turn over. Well, that's I mean, assuming you buy everyone too. You're not gonna send out 1,500 units and buy them all. 
Right. <laughs> so this question, the, the root of the, why yeah. uh, I chose this topic today is because Jill and I were talking earlier today. We, had, we actually had a meeting on this with some of our Land Academy staff. There's four or five topics that's just come up. Mm-hmm. Every, but, you know, with four or five percent of the people that join Land Academy because mm-hmm. they're brand new. And this is and so I want to address these, you know, we're going to consistently address these and dispel these myths. Mm-hmm. It's very logical to think, oh, wait, I'm in this group. Everybody's looking for these counties to send uh, right. mail to. I'm, I'm, just, I'm like, I just started. I'm, they behind, have a huge, I'm too late. I yeah. missed the show. No, it's just not the case at all. No. Uh, that this problem happens. The saturation notion happens because when people are new, they want to buy ultra, ultra cheap property. I just wrote a blog on this. Uh, I don't. I think it got released today, actually. Between fifty and one hundred dollars an acre, because they've never owned any real estate and they want to go through the motions of of uh, buying and selling property, which I totally get. You mm-hmm. know, they pat themselves on the back and say, "I bought a piece of property for five hundred thousand dollars and sold it for twenty five hundred, which I totally respect. We recommend doing that. Mm-hmm. There's about five or eight, eight, maybe ten counties in the country that you can do them in, and I'm going to list them here in a second. And that's where these problems start. That mm-hmm. is where it's saturated. So if you if you do choose to these one of these counties that I'm going to list, expect a tremendous amount of competition. And and I like to say this a lot. We don't have dartboards in our office. The data is going to tell you what to do. If you do the red, right. yellow, green test that Jill and I have uh, d- devised, yeah, they're going to tell you. It, it'll immediately tell you. No, you should never buy property there. So there's no mystery in this. There's no mystery of saturation. Uh, the mystery, uh, the saturation actually happens in the following counties. San Bernardino County, California, Riverside, California, Inyo, California, Imperial, California, Navajo, Arizona, Apache, Arizona, What's uh, Costilla County, Colorado? That's one of the, that's a tip top of the list for some reason. Lake County, Oregon, every single county in Nevada, with the exception of Clark County, which is where Las Vegas is. Iron County, Utah. I don't, I don't know how many that is. What about Southern Arizona? Um, no, Southern Arizona's um, actually. I, I wouldn't. I don't think Southern Arizona is saturated because it's expensive and it's getting more mm. expensive. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So. I would not start there at all. Um, Texas? Texas, Texas, West Texas. That's what I forgot. Yeah, okay. I'm uh, trying to think. There's two counties in West Texas that they're not, the county themselves aren't sure where the, where the properties are. Um, there's a, the, uh, all of the desert counties in New Mexico are places that I think are saturated. Are there, I, Florida? That seems like I don't a, think so. No? Okay. I think Florida's a pretty good, especially if you live in Florida okay. and you know where, you know your way around the state. Okay. So everybody in the Northeast, which is a huge, densely populated area, mm-hmm. uh, wants to buy a property in Florida. You know, so it's not, it's not a hard place to sell, and it seems to move. Again, I can't express this enough. If you apply the red, yellow, green test, yeah. it's going to tell you exactly where to go. If you apply the red, yellow, green test to every property in Wyo- every county in Wyoming, let's mm-hmm. say, just for example, or Washington State or whatever, it's going to show you where to, where to send mail. Right. And so, and here's the other, here's my uh, other point. After you buy four or five properties, after you send out some mail and, and correctly do it, or you buy four or five or eight or 10 properties, Jill always success, suggests that you get 10 properties under your belt before you really are gonna decide if you're gonna take it to the next level, if you enjoy it, if it's something for you. It, within those travels between zero and 10, you're gonna, you will, meet people you'll talk to some county officials you'll talk to a seller or a group of sellers or find a a little area that becomes your niche Mm -hmm. where you specialize in everything right Um, in fact leonard's story is great here maybe his specialization is going to be drilling wells in one one or two counties in california and that's it Mm -hmm. or dropping mobiles on one or two counties that don't care that that you do that so the saturation is it's fiction Mm -hmm. It's only a fact if you concentrate on the super ultra inexpensive desert properties. And by the way, if you want to send mail there and you got a great property that passes all the five A's, it's ultra, ultra cheap, uh, you're going to sell it. It's just, you know, it, it's not. There's this fear that I'm trying to dispel of wasting money on mail 
and not setting it in the right place. So between that, the raw numbers and the niche thing that's going to happen between it's zero and happen. 10 properties and land investors, the discord group that we have and the, the uh, accountability groups that, that group that we, we have, you're, you, we're not going to let you fail. Yeah. So these questions come from people who are the types of people that just in the, they're just yeah. shaking nervous in the beginning. Like, right. and they need to, rather than going through all the education and listening to the show, like this show, and, and spending uh, a lot of time learning, right? they're scared. And there's no reason to be scared at all if you just methodically go through all this and, and, uh, and, and just take it step by step. Awesome. Oh, Good. Joe, you can't have, you can't just well, let me. Do I don't that. have any, you know, you were just rigging with it, and I love it. You had so much to say. This was kind of your hate. Come on, we've all done this. We've had plenty of shows where it was my topic and I just took it and ran with it. Kind of like the one before, before this. All right. I did all the talking about the about the staff. I know you have a lot to add so, on this. Because I know this comes up a lot. I did. Does it come I up in your I tried in the to get it groups? in there. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. So, no, this doesn't come up in our group at all. Oh, my gosh, no. This is not because we're way past that. That's what I figured. No, no, my goodness. All and, my group, my in my group, everyone is an established uh, female investor. We're all over. This is done. This is not a, a concern at all. Um, we're way past that. We're building dream teams. We're working out balance. We're dealing with, um, you know, how to how to grow the company. How to who do I include? You know, is my husband make the cut? You know, that kind of a thing. It's not this. You know. Okay. Good. Yeah. Actually, that's making my point. I and specializing, niche, niches, mm-hmm. more of a niche, more specializing. So not okay. not in my group. I am involved in other groups, but and you know what? That's that's the whole thing you didn't even talk about. I will say this: I'm involved in a lot of other, not a lot, several other um, female focused real estate investment groups in all kinds of social media, and. You didn't. You just touched. You're just talking land. We're not talking all the little niche things. Some people want to do Airbnb. Some people want to do uh, rent out homes. Some people want to flip homes. When you get into those property types, there's there's now there's ten more niches. That's what just. Bit, I agree with you completely, mm-hmm. and I and, and I know that's true. Um, mm-hmm. There's always another deal. You wake up in the morning, and if you have a good mail system going. There's always one, two, five, eight deals in the mail or in the email or, or on the phone or, you know, there's always deals. So it's kind of, it gets uh, a little frustrating for us after a while answering this question because after your first two or three deals, you're not, it'll just be like, yeah, well. hang with us. Yeah. Trust us. That's it. Don't go, don't go there. We've talked about it again. <laughs> We've beaten the dead horse <laughs> and we and we got this. <laughs> Happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us right here on The Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on The Land Academy Show is called 2021 Market Update. 2021, you know, the year, Market Update. You are not alone in a real estate ambition. Uh, I have lovingly called the title. It's a 2021 Market Update by Stephen. Oh. <laughs> That's really what it is. <laughs> so. It's all, boy, when do I ever say this? It's all good news. Oh, totally. The real estate market th- that we're heading into, not just next year, but uh, probably more than that, is fantastic news for all of us. Totally. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you find our content valuable. and We'd really appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please get on over to our YouTube channel and hit us the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us to create the type of content you're here for, hitting the like button on your favorite episodes helps to support our channel's algorithm, engage your interest for future shows. We are are Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. 